Welcome back to Pure Science Education. In today's session, we will be looking at simple distillation and fractional distillation. Uh, we started off looking at, um, in the previous video, at element compound and mixture, and we looked at separation techniques, and we um, did the first separation technique, which was on filtration and then evaporation. Today, we're looking at a second set of video on simple and fractional distillation. What's the difference between these two distillation procedures? So, simple distillation is where you have two miscible liquids that are heated and changed into a vapor. The vapor that has um, the lower boiling point is condensed first and collected. And um, this is used for simple uh, liquids that don't have very high temperatures. Um, the word miscible means they're mixed together. So they are mixed. So for example, if you look at oil and water, they're not miscible. If you look at ink, water and ink, is uh, the colours in the ink are miscible, they're mixed together. Do you know if the liquid has a um, difference in boiling point of 25 degrees um, between the two liquids that you're trying to separate, why do they not separate? And the answer is because um, there isn't um, much in terms of uh, temperature differences between the two liquids, so they're really hard to separate. They will eventually separate, so the temperature difference is very close, so hard to separate because the temperature difference isn't that much. Um, they will eventually separate, but you will have to repeat the process and if you repeat in the process it's going to be expensive and time consuming so in this case um, what we can do to save time and money we can use something called fractional distillation but before we look at fractional distillation look, let's look at the setup for simple distillation so if when you do your a level uh, as you will be doing lots of different distillation setups so uh, let's talk you through this so you have got here something called a round bottom flask and the reason why it's called round bottom flask because it's round in shape so you have round In your round bottom flask you put in your solution uh, in this case I put in a blue ink I have anti bumping granules um, the job of anti bumping granules is if the temperature increases too much um, the whole solution doesn't explode and it doesn't build up a temperature um, that's quite dangerous to work with you then got the heat source which is your Bunsen burner uh, you sit this and you clamp it using clamp stands and then you have a thermometer to make sure you're only heating up to certain temperature um, and you know when your first fraction should be coming through um, this here is called um, a condenser now a condenser is a piece of glass that has got two sheets and what you do you connect it to the tap now the wall is really really important that we get this the right way around so if you look here the cold water's coming in, and if you look here, the cold water's going out. Um, so you have the bottom connected to the tap that's water's coming in, and the top rubber tubing is going out. Now, uh, in between, when the water's coming in and out, the water runs in this um, second sheet of glass, which then cools the vapor that is produced. So, what you're doing is you're heating the solution up, and as you're heating it up, you will have steam coming through here. These purple dots is your steam. And as the steam comes through, it'll then go down the condenser. And the job of the condenser is to then change the steam into droplets as it condenses, and you then end up with this distal distillate here, which I'm now colouring in on purple. Um, and that will be your pure water. So what you end up doing is You'll collect your pure water here and then the dye of the ink with other things will be left in the round bottom flask. 
So this is one way of separating um, things that are not have very high boiling points. The other technique we're going to be looking at today is called fractional distillation, which is more of an industrial technique. So fractional distillation um, is used to separate something called crude oil. Crude oil is found in the underneath the earth and in the sea. Um, crude oil is made out of large and small lengths of hydrocarbon chain with, with different fractions in it and it's really really valuable but as a crude oil it's not very useful to us. So we need to uh, make sure it's useful so we need to turn it into useful fractions and the process of separating crude oil into separate fractions is called fractional distillation. Now crude oil is made out of um, small and large length of hydrocarbon chain mixtures. So how do you know if something is small or large hydrocarbon chain length? Um, it'll depend on the number of carbon and hydrogen there is in the formula. Um, and if something has a small hydrocarbon chain, then it'll have a weak intermolecular force. So smaller length hydrocarbon, for example, Let's do ethane is a small hydrocarbon. So because this small hydrocarbon has got less hydrogen carbon, that means that intermolecular force is weak, which means you don't need to put in a lot of energy. So that fraction will break quite quickly. In comparison to if you've got a larger hydrocarbon, it'll need you'll have strong intermolecular force. So the the large intermolecular force means higher higher boiling point because you need to put in a lot of energy to break that bond. And here because it's a um, um, weak intermolecular force, that means lower boiling point. So the smaller the chain, um, the weaker the intermolecular force, the lower the boiling point. The larger the chain length, the stronger the intermolecular force the more energy needs to be put in to break that fraction. So let's look at what the fractional distillation column looks like. So this is a typical fractional distillation column where you have your crude oil and what you do to your crude oil, you will heat the crude oil before you introduce it to your fractional distillation column. And once it goes through the column, you'll have your large fractions. So you'll have your large hydrocarbon, large chain hydrocarbon on the bottom of the column and you'll have your small chain hydrocarbon on the top of the column. So as the fractional distillation column is getting heated up um, the hydrocarbon are breaking into smaller uh, fractions. Um, so the large chain will then vaporize, then it rises up the column. And as they rise up the column, they get condensed and collected into different areas. And you will see that the hydrocarbon with similar um, boiling points get collected in the same um, area, and that's the reason why we call them fractions. So, um, by looking at this diagram, you can now see that the crude oil, which we originally started off with, has now been changed into things that you are familiar with and are, um, are more useful to us. So all of these are more useful than the original fraction we started off with. Um, so just to in the GCSE exam, you will be asked for the uses of these. Um, so if you look here right at the top, you've got camping gas, you then got petrol, that's used for your cars, kerosene is an aeroplane fuel, 
diesel used in lorry and buses, fuel is for uh, airships, uh, and then you got lubricant oil and um, you have bitumen, which is your road tarmac. Now, if you look at the bottom of the column, you will have large hydrocarbon chain, which means it will have stronger bonds, they have higher temperature, uh, they will be less um, viscous, so you can't pour them, um, they will be less flammable, so they have um, different uses in comparison to if you look on the top, um, the gas will be very flammable and very volatile as well, so it escapes quite quickly. So this video had gone through what fractional distillation and simple distillation is and how they differ from one another. I hope you found this useful um, and can apply when it comes to your GCSE exam. Um, this diagram in particular which is in front of you is a quite a common diagram that comes up in the exam. Uh, they ask you for five marks how does this diagram work, how does a fractional fractions differentiate um, and their uses for the fractions um, and then which ones will have higher or lower melting point and why. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video uh, please like and subscribe and leave any ideas for the next videos you would like me to create. Thank you.